But when Chloe is including and demonstrating exercises like this, you can begin to understand why many content creators don't agree with what she's doing. Here we are, once again, filming another video because obviously I like to film videos and hopefully you like watching my videos. I haven't done one of these videos for a few weeks but we're gonna chuck it in now because they're quite a good means of getting like a rough idea of an opinion on an influencer and their training before doing an actual deep dive into their stuff and their content. The three content creators today are names that have been heavily requested and names I am going to cover in greater detail in the future. But for now, we'll look at a few of their videos. I'm merely giving an opinion on the workouts I am watching at this time. I'm not talking about their workouts as a whole or their content as a whole. It's merely what I am observing right now. We've got Ruba Ali, we've got Katia Elise Henry, whose deep dive is coming up soon. And we've got Chloe Ting. So we'll get ready for that one. Obviously before the video is underway, we must do what needs to be done. And by that, I mean, we must choose a piece of headwear. I say choose a piece of headwear as if I haven't already gone through the cupboard and chosen the piece of headwear today. These are bloody annoying. They're tickling my eyelashes. Do I look entertained? We'll get started with Ruba Ali, who's actually been quite requested recently. So here we have a crush it workout. I'm sure what that is. It's a circuit, so 30 seconds each, four rounds, 36 second rest after each round. I respect that. Cyprian Women's Best, let's not talk about that. Maybe we'll talk about that in the future. Shocking muscles by pairing plyometric and resistance exercises together. Obviously, I know it's just social media terminology, but you're not going to shock the muscles. You're not going to do anything in the muscles to be like, well, geez, careful about that. I'm, I'm a bit shocked. I'm shooketh that you've just chosen to do that exercise. Therefore, I'm going to command myself to grow at a faster rate because I'm so shaken. It doesn't occur, but I do get why it's included. Walking lunges, oh, top tier movement. Absolutely love it. For a lower body movement, I think it's bloody stupendous. Great for the quads, great for the glutes. That range of motion, again, superb. Could not ask for anything better. Even weight distribution from what it seems. There's no wobbling. Knees in line with the direction of the toes. Knee head tickling the, what kind of looks like track turf. Bloody splendid, I would say. Weighted jump squats. Depth is, on the wider stance, it looks good. Narrow stance, maybe questionable, but I do understand with a jump squat your goal probably isn't depth it's more the explosive power and most of that explosive power in many cases from what i believe and what i've read come from about 45 degrees that seems to be optimal knee angle when trying to jump as high as possible but that's just based on what i've read i may be wrong there i think it's a great movement provided you don't have any hindrances regarding let's say injuries that may prevent you from really giving it your all especially with the additional weight it can risk placing a bit more pressure on the joints especially around the knees that's good stuff it's a fair weight as well fair weight so it's like a reverse lunge into a squat, like a goblet squat variation, kind of a goblet squat, so like a sh shoulder resting squat. Again, brings the core a bit more into it. I like it. From what I'm seeing thus far, this is stupendous. Movements like this, they're quite complex. They're quite hard. For beginners, I'd probably say this is probably a no-go. Personally, for most people, I'm not really a big fan of these like combo movements. For advanced individuals, I can see far more of a place for them, provided it's done safely and effectively and efficiently. It's going to be bloody hard. I'll give you that. And again, it depends on the purpose of the workout. If it is purely for like leg growth there may be better options if you're looking at burning a fair amount of calories and like she says obviously getting the plyometrics in there more of a place i get the whole tempo squats i respect that but on the tiptoes we're essentially engaging the calves a bit more for me personally it's, it's probably just not a thing again if you're an advanced individual maybe a consideration but for the majority of people i probably wouldn't waste your time with this i'd probably just keep the heels on the floor i can barely skip normally let alone run and skip i can kind of run and kind of skip. If you want me to kind of run and skip, I'm probably kind of going to fall over. This brings me back to my MMA days. This is kind of the drills we used to do. For a second, I thought she was going to do the roll back and the jump up. That was uh, bloody impressive. I tried that once and I landed straight on my ass and had a bruised tailbone for a long time. Would we'll try it now. Don't want to go through the floor. This could be a wild video. She's doing some wild things and I'm far more impressed than I am anything else right now. I actually back this. So the stiff leg portion, good neutral spine, good range of motion as well. The clean portion, explosive. Again, not compromising back positioning i respect that the squat portion again also fantastic and good technique as a whole like you look at the feet when she goes down for the squat they're not caving they're not collapsing you can see at one point her toes do elevate it's probably because she is pushing a lot of her weight to the heels or maybe to the midfoot that might cause a bit of toe elevation that might just be her i guess readjusting her balance 
sometimes I do question whether these movements are more more for show because a lot of people won't be able to do these kind of things. And although, yeah, sure, they do have a place for a lot of people, they might just be a bit too advanced. But it is a great display of her athletic ability. Obviously, before we continue with the rest of the video, I'm getting hit in the face with these cork things, and it's so annoying. If we could hit 300 likes on the video, I'd really appreciate it because it does let me know that you do like these types of videos and want me to continue making them. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel and maybe click the bell next to it to get notified when I upload multiple times each week. And at the end of the video, obviously we have comment question of the week. So drop a question down below in the comment section and I shall answer the question. Once we hit the 20,000 subscriber milestone, I will be dropping a program template around that time to help you structure your own training. Free stuff when we get to 20K basically. Big wins. We shall carry on with the rest of the video. Katia Elise Henry. I love the step up. I think it's a great movement. Again, someone actually asked this in the comment section last week, I believe, of how low should you go when you're doing a step up. The angle of her knee is beyond 90 degrees. I would also say at least a 90 degree angle at the knee if you can when doing a step up. I don't really like doing them on these plyo boxes because as you can see, there's a lot of give and that can cause ankle roll, a bit of instability and actually make the movement a bit harder, but not in a good way, in a bad way because you're fighting the stability side of things more than anything. So we're looking at an at-home booty and ab workout and stretch. I like stretch, but this is good. Because it's a home workout, I'm gonna be a lot more lenient with this and I understand that you're very limited. So if you are limited to equipment and you do only have things like a band, if you're getting some kind of activation and stimulation, depending on your current experience within training, may lead to some results. Make these movements harder by maybe doing one leg at a time. Oh, it's like we're in sync, great band. I just knew what was coming. And this is a staggered stance, like RDL variation. I think it's a decent movement for hamstring development and the posterior chain development. Obviously the whole staggered stance does make the movement more difficult. Heavy leg day and booty workout with Katia. That's what I wanna see. We wanna see the heavy workouts because this is when you can really see how somebody trains, especially when they aren't limited to equipment and you can see what their form looks like when they are pushing themselves a bit further. So we have a barbell back squat coming up. Is it gonna be high bar or low bar? It's a high bar squat. I'm gonna say depth is a no. You'll see here the hip crease is a above the top of the knee. Back's in a good position, head's fine. She's looking at herself in the mirror. Personally, I don't really like squatting in front of the mirror and I encourage people not to squat in front of the mirror because often you spend far too much time looking at yourself rather than actually focusing on the movement. In many cases, I believe it's best to film the set and look at it afterwards and be like, you know what, knees were caving. Perhaps I need to place a bit more emphasis on externally rotating the hips. Let's see if that works. Another set. Oh, actually knees aren't caving as much. That's a big win. So here we have an RDL, and one thing you'll notice here is, so range of motion is good, back position is good, head position is good, so you see how her head is looking at the floor rather than looking up, we like to see that. The one issue I do have, you can just about see it, she's mixed gripping. I don't think her grip is gonna get too tested. When performing RDLs, minimize how much time you're spending on the mixed grip, especially in accessory movements. Definitely say double overhand grip if you can, or if it's too heavy for you, maybe strap up for this. Mixed grip does have the potential to contribute to muscular imbalances. Again, I see a lot of people do move movements like this, not so much anymore, but in commercial gyms, I have seen this before. First impressions, I'm a bit like, hmm, unsure. I think I'd stick more to like a free weight based compound movement or maybe a single leg leg press or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm there for it. The range of motion is very limited, very limited as you can see. I think I would just prefer a bog standard straight on unilateral leg press, so one leg at a time with a greater range of motion. There are about eight exercises in this workout, which I think is just a bit excessive. Personally, if it is a resistance based workout with the primary intention of like say building muscle, I would probably limit yourself to maybe six exercises in most cases, provided they are done with sufficient intensity. Besides, besides, oh, oh, my little boy's got kennel cough. Why do you hate all my hats recently? What's going on? You're too big for this. Oh, you're not very, he's not very well. He's got kennel cough, poor boy. What are you biting me, naughty? He's getting better, don't worry, he's improving. It was worse a few days ago. This is the big one, Chloe Ting. So before the Chloe Ting army come in shouting at me, screaming at me, calling me a misogynist or whatever it may be, sometimes even worse words than that, I'm merely assessing the workout that I'm currently observing. So a 15 minute toned arms and upper body workout, beginner friendly with dumbbells. I appreciate beginner friendly, we do like that. Again, a narrow chest press is fine. And obviously the narrow grip is a bit more tricep dominant. It would be nice if Chloe were to maybe push herself a bit further in these workouts. It's nice that Chloe does include cues throughout these workouts. The workouts I have selected to talk about today are quite why do you need to be safe workouts? You surely you can't do anything that's too wild. I really can't complain. Like The exercises selected in this workout are fine. They are good exercises. Rear delt fly, I love to see it. We like rear delt work because again, they're very commonly neglected and rear delt work is very important, especially when looking at injury prevention and postural correction. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is where things are gonna get a bit spicy. So look at the movement, look at the angle of the body, look at the angle of the arm, all those bits and bobs. A tricep kickback implies you're working the triceps. When you're doing kickback with the dumbbell, it's actually going towards the floor. Gravity is doing the 
work for you. Your muscles aren't really working. The other thing, you're gonna work your biceps more in this eccentric part, which is actually concentric when looking at bicep work, than you are the triceps on the kickback. I could hold 100 kilos in that arm. I could not do anything and gravity will pull me into that position. To do an effective kickback, let me see if I can demonstrate. Obviously I can't bend over too much because if I bend over you can't see me. Imagine I'm bent over more, arm up high, like so. Dumbbells here, up, away from gravity, up like so. That would be a more effective tricep kickback. Obviously, ignore the body position. We're looking at the arm position here. Unfortunately, this tricep kickback is absolutely rubbish. I don't know what she's doing in this whole leg thing. As she states in the like voiceover, it's going to work our triceps and our legs. It's, again, as I've said before, it's not really working your triceps and you don't really work your legs either. You're just moving your legs back and forth. There's no real resistance. It's a shame because most of the other exercises in that workout were actually pretty decent. They were good, solid, basic exercises. I am due to do a proper deep dive on Chloe in the future, but when Chloe is including and demonstrating exercises like this you can begin to understand why many content creators don't agree with what she's doing but that's it that's the video we've had a look at a few influencers and content creators and i've given my thoughts on the workouts i have seen i will be doing a deep dive i mean like a proper deep dive video regarding the content of all of the influencers mentioned throughout today's video in the future but now it's time for conquest of the week how much of a struggle should we feel when executing movement with some weights i guess keeping a proper form is basic but then how can i find my range of weights to use is a possible amount of repetition some indication of it? Great question. And it's also quite a hard question to answer because essentially the answer is it depends. When you're resistance training and let's say you're looking to optimize muscle growth, I would say intensity should be high. For me personally, my training is everything to failure. The rough rep range for most movements will be six to 10 for the, let's say if I'm doing a top set and then for back down work will be 10 plus. Let's say you look at strength training and powerlifting, you probably don't wanna to go to failure, especially on the main movements like the squat, the bench and the deadlift as you want to train strength rather than test it. And you also don't want to fry your CNS. If you're doing workouts to lose a bit of weight, perhaps, then you should be pushing yourself and you should be aiming to do more and more each week. So I would say that a basic rule of thumb answer for a lot of people would be get close to failure without necessarily failing. So you should push it to the point where you're like, not oh, that was really hard. I probably had a, a, a bit more left in the tank, but I'll stop it there. So I'm sorry the answer was a bit vague. It's just so dependent on goals and the individual as well. It's really hard for me to give a generic answer or like a universal answer. But if you would like, drop me a message on Instagram. Let me know your goals so I have a better understanding of how to direct the answer to that question. And then maybe I can give you a bit more of a tailored answer but that's it that's the video if you like the video be sure to let me know you like the video by dropping 300 likes on the video that is a goal and that's what we'll shoot for if you haven't already i'd appreciate if you did subscribe to the channel and maybe click the bell next to it to get notified when i upload every week multiple times and if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video drop it down below for comment question of the week regardless of whether you agreed or disagree with what i had to say I appreciate your time and I appreciate hearing your thoughts and opinions on this video and the workouts we have seen. So thank you for tolerating the video.